This week's word of the week is going to be uh, porosity. You can see right here. And it's a weld discontinuity that is very common in all the welding processes, actually. But on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being not that big of a deal, 10 being a big deal, if you don't know what porosity is, it's right up there. It's like a 9 or a 10, so we're going to write a 9 right here. Uh, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's right up there if you don't know what porosity is and you're in the welding world. So, uh, what is porosity? It's basically holes in the weld, right? Now, all the welding processes need to have some form of shielding to prevent porosity, basically holes in the weld. So uh, the, atmospheric, um, the atmosphere gets into the weld, the gases from the air try to escape, causing holes in the weld or porosity. Now, I, I wrote down here causes and fixes. So these are all the causes of um, that atmosphere getting into the weld and causing the holes, all right? Because we have shielding gases and fluxes and things that prevent atmospheric contamination. So anytime that that's broken, where you know the shielding gas doesn't work or the flux doesn't work, um, you're going to get porosity. So I'm going to kind of go over what the causes are of porosity, and then as I'm going over the causes, I'm going to go over the fixes. So we're going to start right here with no shielding gas. So with MIG and TIG, you're going to have a shielding gas. You're going to have argon or CO2 coming out of a cup that prevents atmospheric contamination and porosity. So if you have no shielding gas, the way to fix that is turn the bottle on, right? You know what I mean? I have people all the time that come to me, I don't know what's wrong with this welder. And it's clearly that the shielding gas is just not on. They never turned it on. So the fix for that is very simple. Just turn it on, right? The next one here you see is a disturbance in the gas. So something that's preventing the gas from coming out cleanly um, and preventing that atmospheric contamination. One of the most common things with MIG welding, dirty cup. If you're welding all day and spatter's getting stuck all in the cup, Eventually, it's going to prevent that shielding gas from coming out and you're going to get porosity in the weld. So the fix for that, or the remedy, whatever you want to call it, clean the cup every once in a while, right? You get some MIG pliers, pry all the porosity out, porosity spatter out, and then it'll prevent you from getting that porosity. Wind, MIG and TIG. If it's a hot day in the summer and you got a fan on you, and uh, all of a sudden, you know, sometimes they rotate, maybe it rotates the wrong way and your shoulder catches it, it'll blow the shielding gas away and you'll get porosity. So you want to avoid a windy environment. So if you're welding outside, Megan TIG probably isn't the answer if it's a windy day, right? So prevention, just stay out of the wind, I guess. So, but yeah, if there's wind, it'll cause porosity. Um, too far away, I wrote over here, and with that, that can be any of the processes really. Uh, with Megan TIG, I kind of got up here. The cup's too far away. Usually, it's with uh, Meg more likely than TIG. Just take your soul focused on that. Um, but yeah, so if your cup is too far away, the shielding doesn't get established and you get porosity. And then I got down here stick. It can happen with stick too. If your rod's too far away, then the flux isn't melting down and the atmosphere um, that surrounds the weld isn't getting established, then you can get porosity with stick too. Again, too far away. So you, the, the fix for this is to make sure you're the proper distance uh, when you're welding. Dirty material. Make and take, they do not like dirty material, right? So if you're welding over water, if you're welding over oil, if you're welding over dirt, if you're welding over mill scale, all those things can cause porosity. So uh, the remedy for that, of course, is just clean the material. But with stick, it's not necessarily as important because it can burn through a little bit more. But with make and take, dirty material can cause porosity every time. And the fix for that, of course, is to clean it, grind it, wire reel it, whatever you got to do. <clears throat> SMAW starts. So when you strike an arc with 7018, you will get a little bit of porosity in that uh, arc strike because what happens is there's no shielding established before you strike the arc, right? With a MIG and a TIG application, you can put a pre-purge on there, right? And it establishes the shielding before the arc is struck. With stick, it's got to establish its own shielding. So when you start in shielded metal arc welding, you're gonna have a little bit of porosity in there. So the way to fix that is you strike an arc over here, back up, and then run the arc strike over your arc start, whatever you want to call it, and it'll draw that porosity out. So that's just a good way to uh, prevent porosity with uh, stick welding. Chipped flux. So this again is with stick. If you ever frozen on 718, then you break it off, and then at the end of the rod, there's no flux there. You strike the arc, it gets all erratic and full of porosity. That's because the, the flux is chipped, right? But what I'd rather talk about is more like inspect the rod before you strike an arc, because it can be chipped in the middle of the length of the rod too. So you gotta watch that as well. So inspect your rods, right? And if you're doing a code quality well, make sure you're using a new rod every time. Don't use one that's been frozen. So flux core arc welding, wet wire. 
with flux cord, you got to really take care of the wire. If it gets dampness on the inside, you'll end up with wormholes or chicken tracks or whatever you want to call it, but it's just another form of porosity, right? So to prevent that, when you, if you know you're going to store flux core for a while, you're not going to use it for a while, take it off the machine, put it into a bag, tape it all up, and then put it in a dry environment if you can to prevent that from getting wet. All right. Low CFA, so low cubic feet per hour or liters per minute, depending on if you're welding in the United States, it's cubic feet per hour, pretty much everywhere else is liters per minute. So um, if you're taking or making and you've got a little bit of porosity, you can't figure out why, take a look at your um, regulator and see if you have low cubic feet per hour or liters per minute and turn that thumb screw up and adjust it to get more gas flow to, to help you actually establish that shield. So, all right, so we've gone over causes, fixes. Let's raise this baby up. What it is, it's gone through everything, right? Is it allowable? So you're talking it's a discontinuity. Is it allowable? Is there some of it allowable that, uh, and some not? Is there a percentage, whatever? Whatever you want to call it. So I looked up in AWS D1.1 Structural Steel Welding Code to get the exact numbers for this video because I knew it was allowable because when you take your CWI exam, then you measure porosity to see if it's allowable. I couldn't remember what the actual tolerance was. So I actually Xeroxed it and cut it out. This is right out of the code book, word for word. For all groove welds and for fillet welds, the sum of the piping porosity greater than 1 32nd of an inch in diameter shall not exceed 3 eighths of an inch in any linear inch of weld and shall not exceed 3 quarters of an inch in any 12 inches length of weld. So what does that mean? All right, I kind of drew this little sketch out right here. So this is a weld and this is a weld. Obviously it's a drawing, but we're gonna pretend it's a weld, right? So this is one inch long, all right? So according to the code, the porosity has to be greater than 1 32nd of an inch, which I got represented right here. If you add up all the holes in one inch of weld, the sum of that has to be less than or equal to 3 eighths of an inch. So if you add it up and it's less than 3 eighths of an inch, it's allowable, all right? If it's above 3 eighths of an inch, it's rejectable. So that's according to the AWS D1.1 code, how much porosity is allowable in one inch. In 12 inches, which I put this well all the way down the bottom of the board here, 12 inches, the sum has to be less than or equal to three quarters of an inch. So if you had a 12 inch weld, you added up all the porosity and it was less than three quarters of an inch, it's allowable. If it's more than three quarters of an inch, it's not allowable. Which to me, I see porosity, I just think something's wrong. I don't, I wouldn't, it seems like a lot to me, I guess, you know, all these numbers. Three eighths of an inch in an inch, I mean, that's almost half an inch. It's almost half the weld, right? So I, it just seems like a lot but that's what it is allowable by the code. So, um, push this back down. And what we're gonna do now, is I'm gonna go out in the lab here. I'm gonna get a MIG welder going. I'm gonna do a weld with uh, low cubic feet per hour so we get a little bit of porosity. And then I'm gonna do one with the gas completely off to show you how obvious it should be if you have no shielding gas. If you are in the welding world and you strike an arc with MIG or TIG, and you don't know immediately the shielding gas is off, that's not good, right? Okay, that goes, that goes up here to like 10, right? People do it all the time. You, you forget to turn the bottle on, you strike an arc, you go, oh, I forgot to turn on the shielding gas, and then you go turn it on. But you gotta be able to, to read that, all right? So let's get out in the lab, and uh, we'll do what I said we we're gonna do with uh, no shielding gas, and then low shielding gas, and then we'll get out of here. I just did a fillet weld with the shielding gas on. So everything's set up properly, it looks good. And what I'll do now is I'll make another T-joint. One side I will do no gas, and one side I will do low gas. On the first side, I did very good at failing. I started the first inch of that weld with gas, turned it completely off, and you can see it's all full of holes and looks disgusting. That's why it's important that if you don't have your shielding gas on to know immediately that your shielding gas is off. You should strike an arc and know instantly if that shielding gas is off. The other side I didn't do so good at failing. I turned it down to five. Let me just show you. All right, that first part was at 10 cubic feet per hour, and I thought that would get a bunch of holes in it, but you really can't see any. So I lowered it to five on the next little part. And again, you can't really see any. Then I lowered it in between five and zero, and I finally got some holes, but the gas was basically off. 
but I guess you get the idea. I can't believe it actually welded that good as, as, and that low of a, a pressure. So, all right, so hopefully that explains what porosity is, how you get it, how you can get rid of it. That's all we got for today. Thanks for watching and subscribing to TV Weld, and we are out of here.